Hi, this is John Cole with OKRod.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And this episode is on, yes, on my health food channel, um, where I talk about health and my lifestyle. And it's a very important episode. It may not be so popular because it's something that most of you guys love dearly. It's your cell phone. Yes, I'm going to talk about cell phones and their, in my opinion, probable effect on your health, right? People want to disregard, like I have friends that are raw foodists and talk on their cell phones to their wives like all the time, I think more than necessary personally, you know, and they think it's harmless, but these guys, in my opinion, can cause cancer. And this is not just my opinion, but it's also based on some of the science that I'll be showing with you guys in a second. That being said, I know cell phones are very convenient and they do a lot of things from allowing you to play games or listen to your music, post on Instagram and make a difference in the world, lots of different things. So in this episode, I'm not just going to say, throw away your cell phones, they're bad. What I will say is the most comprehensive and best way to minimize your risk, in my personal opinion, because I've researched this for myself and I want to share with you guys because not a lot of people talk about this. There's like... You know, um, there's like either you, they're good or they're bad, throw them away or get rid of them. But, you know, I think there could be a compromise. You can use them safely if you do it in the ways I will be sharing. So in the end of this episode, I'll be showing the five ways you guys could minimize the, um, you know, potential health, negative health impacts from your cell phone. So before we even get into this episode, first thing I want to share is... A website ehtrust.org and there's an everybody growing of evidence that cell phones and wireless radiation so it's not just cell phones it could even be your wireless router which we'll be talking about in a minute you know um, can harm our health in a number of different ways and this is just from their website so in 2011 the World Health Organization classified cell phone radiation as class 2b carcinogen possibly carcinogenic to humans the same category as lead engine exhaust, DDT, and jet fuel. The evidence has increased since then. So this is basically 10 years ago, the WHO, World Health Organization, classified it as lead. And I know a lot of you guys try to avoid certain foods with lead and arsenic like rice because it's, it's a heavy metal, it's bad. Well, understand that your cell phone is in the same category. Studies in Europe show that people who use cell phones heavily for over 10 years have double the risk of brain cancer and those uh, who begin using cell phones as teenagers have four to five times higher chance of being diagnosed with brain cancer. To me, brain cancer sounds like probably one of the worst cancers because in many cases they can't even operate on your brain. Um, you know, like they could operate on your colon and take out your colon or parts of your colon or remove polyps in your colon if you had cancer down there. That does not sound like fun. So, you know, know this. If you choose to use, use your cell phone, know that that is a potential health outcome of using your cell phone. And here it is. The 10-year, uh, 30 million National Institute of Environmental Health Science National Toxicological Programs, NTP, studies of cell phone radiation found that chronic exposure to RFR was associated with, quote, clear evidence of cancer in RFR exposed male rats. In addition, exposed animals had significantly more DNA damage heart damage, and low birth rate weight. I mean, I could go on. There's basically a Yale study uh, funded by the American Cancer Society found that association between thyroid cancer and cell phone use in people uh, with certain genetic susceptibilities. This is an interesting one. A major research study found decreased memory among teenagers with higher cell phone exposures to the brain after one year of repeated exposure. This study replicated previous findings. A major NIH study found that even very low levels of microwave radiation from cell phones can change brain function. Another study in 4G technology showed that the radiation-affected brain neural activity is not only in the closer brain region, but also in the remote region, including the left hemisphere of the brain. If you're going to have kids, you want to listen to this one. In 2012, Yale research demonstrated that when pregnant mice were exposed to cell phone signals, their offspring had much greater levels of hyperactivity, impaired memory, and impaired brain development in the part of brain linked to ADHD. So, you know, basically, we are dumbing people down, not only by the 
toxic food and ultra processed foods that people eat like fast foods and junk foods and all these things but also your cell phone and let's not talk about reproduction you know I want to have kids one of these days and several research reviews indicate that reproduction related health problems from cell phones um, as of two, 2020 several expert independent scientists have published their evaluation that the evidence has increased and that this radiation is a human carcinogen and now actually I want to you know highlight a study that just came out I'll post a link down below to this as well as the EH Trust website and it says a cellular phone use and risk of tumor systemic review and meta-analysis so basically they investigated a whole bunch of studies that were done correlated all the data put it together and they spit out their answer which I will now read you conclusion in sum the updated comprehensive meta-analysis of case controlled studies and this is from 2020 so this like literally just came out found significant evidence linking cellular phone use to increase tumor risk especially among cell phone users with cumulative cell phone use of over 1,000 or more hours in their lifetime which corresponds about 17 minutes per day over 10 years and especially among studies that employed high quality methods further quality perspective studies providing higher levels of incidence than case control studies are warranted to confirm our findings so some of you guys are skeptics and may not believe these kind of meta-analysis and these studies and think that's hogwash and you guys have the right to do that so you guys could continue to radiate your brain that being said you know I take these matters seriously I take my health seriously I would encourage you guys to take your health seriously besides just your cell phone diet and lifestyle sleep um, you know peace in your life nature connection very important to have a healthy life besides just your cell phone use so I'd encourage you guys like I, I've been on a diet thing for since 1995 and I'm always upping my game and increasing my diet and here's the thing why don't why is diet in my opinion so important because diet allows us to deal with stressors in our life and to me cell phone radiation is basically just another stressor it's like your husband or wife yelling at you which nobody likes to hear that your your mom or your dad yelling at you maybe it's the stress of having to wake up early right all these little stressors add up to be a big stressor and when your body can't can no longer deal with the stress because it doesn't have the nutrient nutrients it needs and it's not working properly then your body breaks down so if you are going to use yourself and I encourage you guys to eat a nutrient dense diet I would look up Dr. Joel Furman you know his diet he wrote a book on that is one of the best ways to do that of course you know check out my videos because I try to like up it and take my game even to the next level uh, over and above and beyond what many other people are doing in my personal opinion from what I've seen it's all about the polyphenols and antioxidant compounds and different fibers from the plants that are amazing chemical factories okay so as you guys learned in my opinion the studies are clear and cell phones are not a good thing to you so number one you know a lot of the authors of the studies would say minimize your usage you know don't use a cell phone if you don't have to right like the the cell phone companies have these like unlimited minute plans I mean remember back in the day you'd have to pay for your minutes but now they're basically almost all unlimited plans and it encourages you to use more minutes because they're free or they're included so you just keep radiating your brain more I see people have needless conversations in my personal opinion on their cell phones just talking about insignificant things I mean if you're straight on the freeway you're getting chased by robbers or something do the cell phone could definitely save your life in that uh, respect and you should definitely use it you know in in emergency situations that to get help that you need but to just have everyday conversations you know I, I think it, it, it you shouldn't be doing it personally if you take your health seriously now if you don't really care and you want to you know you want to have a better connection with people and use your cell phone and ready your brain that's your choice you know <laughs> and that's cool the other thing I want to share is that the cell phone industry is very huge it is very powerful they have many lobbyists and they spend lots of money to deter research such as this from coming out because if it does come out right it's like tobacco smoking in the 1970s you know or even before that was supposed to be healthy for you and then the tobacco industry tried to cover it up 
the, the fast food industry is trying to do the same things and the cell, food, cell phone industry in my opinion is also trying to do the same things to make sure the research is suppressed and is not coming out to people and you know that's just business man it's their bottom line when money gets involved people and companies get crazy and they don't want it to hurt their business but that being said a lot of people are addicted to their cell phones and even if they knew that it that it can cause cancer <laughs> like it said um, they're still gonna use it I mean, there's warnings on every cigarette packet but it, you know it's, can cause cancer but people still use it anyways <laughs> but nonetheless if you guys want to minimize the risk of any kind of detrimental health benefits from using your cell phone this is the video you will want to watch because now I'll be showing you guys my five tips um, you know besides just using it less or you know use a wired cord and have it away from you you know don't leave it on and like right in your pocket or in your breast because you know that's where it's rating all the time when it's on like you guys know all that stuff this is like next level stuff for those of you guys that want to take your health to the next level and even minimize your risk more so my first tip is I want you guys always to have your phone in airplane mode that's the best way to have your phone and in my opinion if you have your phone in airplane mode with all the wireless you know uh, signals turned off the phone is pretty much actually probably even safer than a laptop because it is so small and there's no radiation emitting from it there's three main radiations that emit from a cell phone and in my opinion some are worse than others and to me this is based on the amount of energy that is put out in that signal so the worst kind of radiation out of your cell phone in my opinion is the cell phone radiation so that's where your cell phone has to has to transmit to a cell phone tower that could be up to two miles away and if you have like one bar strength on your cell phone it's even it's even worse the signal because now your cell phone puts out more power to hit that tower that's further away if you have five bars then maybe it's not so bad but if you if you have a cell phone tower next to your house that's probably bad news and I would encourage you guys to move because now you're getting radiated all the time with the cell phone signals the next toxic a uh, signal from your cell phone is Wi-Fi signals, right? The Wi-Fi signal has to only transmit to your router, maybe in a couple rooms away in your house. Um, so that signal is not as strong, but still it is a signal that is going to be constantly coming out of your cell phone. And the final signal that I think to be least harmful is the Bluetooth signal because literally that could only go a number of yards before it just doesn't, it can't, it can't reach anything. So, you know, if you have to use Bluetooth, that's probably better to have a Bluetooth and have your phone set far away from you and use the Bluetooth and stand away from your phone than have your phone right up on your ear, for example, okay? So, always put your phone in airplane mode. But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, John, in airplane mode, my phone can't do nothing. I can't listen to my music. I can't watch YouTube videos. I can't see what, you know, you posted on Instagram. <laughs> can't see none of that stuff. That's true. You could use your phone as some basic, you know, apps that you download. You know, you could, there's GPS apps that you could use with your phone in airplane mode. You could download your music. You could download YouTube videos to watch when you're offline in airplane mode. And of course, a lot of functions that don't require connectivity, you could still use your phone. So, you know, for the most part, my phone is always in airplane mode. But now you're thinking, John, is, my phone's in airplane mode. Nobody could call me or text me. That's totally true also. So now I'm going to show you guys uh, tip number two, the solution for that so that your phone can still be in airplane mode with cell phone service, with wireless and Bluetooth off, but still, uh, you know, get texts and whatnot and check my Instagram or whoever's Instagram you're checking or communicate with your friends on Facebook. So how do you get an interconnection on your phone without having your wireless on? It's simply old school methods you know that I grew up with because we didn't have wireless back in the day <laughs> is a cord so they have these adapters right this adapter is the lightning adapter to plug into uh, you know all iPhones with a lightning port and the um, iPads and whatnot so you plug it in the bottom and then on the other side there's a little Ethernet jack right and then you have your router that then you could date basically the wire comes out of your router and then you plug it into your phone so you know I've wired my house for that the different rooms have wired internet in it so I could plug in a laptop or plug in my phone uh, so that I can use it you know basically without being connected to the internet now at this point you know 
Some cell phone providers may allow you to get, you know, phone calls and texts with, you know, without having the cell phone service on, but many still will not be able to do that. So I'm going to share with you guys my next tip in a second so that you can still receive calls and make calls using a wired connection. So this is with an iPhone. I'll put a link down below to this adapter. I haven't had the best of luck with some of these adapters. They're all basically aftermarket adapters because Apple does not make one. Some of them will burn out after a little bit. But uh, this one seems to be working so far so good. So link down below to that if it is still available. I also have an Android phone. So this is a Google Pixel phone. And this, is, this uses a USB-C. So please be aware, um, you know, many Android phones, some of them have the capability of plugging in, once again, that cord. So you could plug in the cord into the bottom of the phone. And then you could have an um, Ethernet jack that then you can plug in an Ethernet cord to and you know get cert get uh you know be able to use your phone online listen to music and do other things so uh yeah that's how i do it so that i could basically minimize the risk of using a cell phone i think you know at this point pretty much the cell phone's pretty much harmless because it's not transmitting any radiation out other than the emfs that's naturally coming out of it um you know but they would that would come out of a regular you know, laptop or CRT screen as well. Now my next solution is, John, if I'm wired in and my cell phone service is off, I can't receive calls or texts. So that's what this next solution is for. So on my phones, I have an app called Google Voice. Google Voice is a free app. It's made by Google and it provides you a phone number that people can text into or call. And then in their app, you can also, on the Android anyways, you can call out, receive calls in. You could also send texts out and um, you know get texts in from the Google Voice. So that's how I'm able to text and make calls. Now, it's interesting on the iPhone, for some reason, the app does not allow you to make outgoing calls, but you can accept incoming calls. And you can also receive texts and send text messages as well. That being said, another thing about Google Voice that's nice is that you could also log into voice.google.com and you can check your texts, make phone calls, and receive phone calls all from your computer should you be sitting at your computer a lot, which will basically eliminate the, the need for a cell phone. Now for calling out on the iPhone because the Google Voice does not work for whatever reason, probably some rule Apple has, is I, I, I basically buy Skype. I pay for Skype. It's like $2.99 a month to have Skype out so that I can make calls on my cell phone should I need. Now, the next level is if you guys are home a lot, right? I mean, nobody has landlines anymore. I don't even have a real landline that's wired from the telephone company, whether that's Ma Bell or whomever. But what I do have is I have a voice over IP box, and that's this box right here. This is called a Polycom OB High box. And what this box allows you to do, it allows you to take your Google Voice number that you signed up previously, a uh, number for in, in uh, you know tip number two. Now you can connect your Google Voice and program your OB High Polycom VoIP um, adapter into your uh, Google Voice, and now. Uh, you basically plug in the Ethernet in the back of this device, right? And now um, you then you then you take a standard phone, whether you have a, a wired or wireless phone. You take your phone and then you plug in that little phone connection to another port on the Obahai. And now this box will basically, when somebody calls your Google Voice number, it'll ring on this phone. Of course, if you're super paranoid, you guys could have a wired phone if you can still find them. Um, I have a cordless phone and just a brief thing on cordless phones is I, I found that the newer cordless phones, if you just buy a brand new one, the decked phones, you know, they may put out, you know, um, signals all the time to the base, which I really don't like. Luckily, I, this is the phone I've been using for like, I don't know, probably like 50, 10 years, 15 years. A long time and this is a 5.8 gigahertz power max unit in and I tested this with multiple different meters and the radiation that it puts out is quite low uh, compared to some of the newer phones in my personal opinion that being said you know um, I also like to when I'm talking on the phone I don't I can't sit there stationary I got to be out doing stuff and gardening and other things because I'm so busy in my life so I mean 
this radiation is still way less than a cell phone because once again, this phone can maybe reach from my backyard and maybe kind of get staticky to, to my base unit. It does not transmit miles uh, to the cell tower. Although I did back in the day have, have um, cordless phones that did transmit over a mile <laughs> to the antenna I put up on top of my roof before I knew any better. So yeah, the Polycom Obahai uh, box will now allow you to basically have a landline at home. So if you stay at home a lot, now you don't even need to be have your laptop on to get calls or even have your phone plugged in. You can now use this box to basically have a phone line like you did or like you didn't do in the olden days. Now my fifth and final tip is that you know, if you want to get rid of your cell phone, or that there, there's a number of other solutions you guys can do, including iPhone and Android eliminators. And so that's a program that run on your PC or maybe your Mac to basically emulate the cell phone. It's often used for development purposes when people are writing, you know, code for Androids or um, iPhones, but you can use it to, you know, run the apps that are on your phone. In addition, you know, a lot of the apps on the Android are available in the Google Chrome Store, which then you can use, you know, and download on your PC. So I like downloaded the uh, Instagram app on my PC so I could use my Instagram from my PC, um, you know, instead of my cell phone. Um, another thing you guys can do, I know you're thinking, John, man, you got all this stuff wired, but, you know, what about wireless? Can I use wireless in my house? Well, I personally don't use wireless in my house, and I do not encourage you guys to do that either. The thing with wireless, although it is safer than a cell phone tower that's two miles away, the issue, especially with some of the newer routers, is that they, tr they transmit constantly, and they're constantly beaming you with signals 24-7. So not only is it the strength of the signal, but it's how often you're getting bombarded with the signal, in my opinion. So that's why, you know, this is just the, this is an old router that I'm not using, uh, so I have it in the video, but basically I use a wired router. Actually, this is the one I'm going to upgrade into, and this is a wired router. This is the uh, Edge Router X Advanced Gigabit Ethernet Router, um, and so this is just a wired router. Now, if you do want to have a wireless router, I would encourage you guys to use it in the wire mode only. A lot of routers you can jump into the firmware and you're going to have to look up how to do that. That's beyond the scope of this video. And you could go into the firmware and turn off the, the antennas so that it does not transmit out of the antennas. Every time I go to my parents' house and I'm sleeping in the bedroom, their router is in the bedroom, the spare bedroom that I sleep in. So I log into the router before I go to bed and turn off the wireless. And then when I wake up, I turn it back on. I mean, if you don't want to do that, then you could basically just uh, um, turn off your router at certain times of the day. So, you know, if you're, if you're not using your, your internet when you're sleeping, turn it off at night. You know, you could get a timer, an automatic timer that my friend did this, automatically turns off the wireless at 10 o'clock so that you go to bed earlier and it's off until 8 in the morning. Um, that being said, I would just turn it off all the time, and I would personally wire my house. But once again, I want to teach you guys good, better, best. I want to teach you guys all the ways, because surely, you know, you can put your phone in Wi-Fi mode, and then you don't need to have a, a wired connection like I do. But then you can still use the Google Voice. You can still use all the apps like you normally would on cell service. And so that's a much better solution, in my personal opinion. So, I mean, I think that's pretty much it for this episode. I really want to show you guys some of the things I do aside from just my diet. And there's a lot more things besides my cell phone that I've researched and looked into that I do to minimize my, my exposure, right? right. It's shown that cell phones can basically are, are, are causing stress in our bodies. They could damage DNA and all these things. You know, they lower reproduction, cause cancer. I've had have at least one or two friends that have lost their lives probably due to their cell phone radiation and tumors. So I don't want to take that chance, especially because I'm doing already so many other things for my health and almost lost my life when I was younger. I take my health seriously and I encourage you guys to take your health seriously as well. And these are only words that you're listening to, but hopefully this has made an impact and you'll do at least one of these things or two of these things to minimize your cell phone exposure. And of course, I want you guys also to minimize other stressors in your life. That may be mean breaking up with your boyfriend or girlfriend or even getting divorced if they're causing you a lot of stress. Or better yet, get counseling and, and work on your issues so that everybody could just be living at peace and harmony. I wish there was a lot more peace and harmony in the world than there is currently. All right?
Uh, so anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, please, guys and girls, share this with somebody else you guys could think it could help. If this kind of information is not being put out to the mainstream to how to minimize your risk of cell phone use if you, if you choose to, and that basically it's just being discarded like it's not really even real evidence, which I think is quite sad because I, I think it is real evidence. I think it is a par probability. And I, and I just am sad to say in like, you know, 10 or 20 years, you know, the incidences of brain cancers and other kind of tumors is going to go up dramatically. But, you know, the other thing I think is that we need population control. So if you want to control yourself, <laughs> use your cell phone more. All right. Other than that, I would also encourage you guys to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes I've coming out every five to seven days in the world or what we'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as many videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on the YouTube channel dedicated to teach you guys how to live a healthier life and including more fresh fruits and fresh vegetables, which are the best foods to counteract any kind of stressors in your life, in my personal opinion. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables and minimize your cell phone use. That's always the best.